Lewis Lee, the First African Baptist Church located here in Goldsboro, North Carolina, where our theme is encouraging hearts, changing lives, and saving souls. We certainly thank God for you. We praise God. We certainly hope and pray that everyone is blessed during this difficult time in our nation. We also pray and we want to take a moment to pray for the families of those 13 soldiers that were where we all have witnessed on the news that were killed this week in Afghanistan. Not only do we want to pray for those, but all that were wounded and continuously to pray, pray that our leadership would do the right things that will ensure the safety of all the innocent men and women, both American and Afghans. We want to pray for those that are dealing with the, the violence and the, ter the torment and just the anxiety of the situation. It's easy for us or it's not necessarily easy, but it's easier for us to sit in the comforts of our own home with the liberties that we enjoy, to not understand sometimes the difficulty that goes on throughout this world. So we certainly thank God. We thank God for everyone that served in our armed forces that are helping to make the world a better place. We thank God for the prayer warriors that are, that are looking beyond all of the political jargon, looking beyond the, the politics on both sides and are just saying, we need the Lord to step in and intervene and then not only that because God has always been there it's our responsibility to seek the will of God to elevate those things that are consistent with the scriptures of God not trusting in men not trusting in government not trusting in chariots not trusting in our might but trusting in the name of the Lord our Savior Jesus the Christ because he is truly the answer for the world today as a child I remember the song Jesus is the answer for the world today Above him there's no other, for Jesus is the way. That still holds true today. That still holds true in the life of the church, and it should hold true in the life of every believer, that Jesus Christ is truly the way, the truth, and the life. We're going to pick up this week in Acts, the fifth chapter. God is blessing. Last week was a difficult week as we deal with it. Not only was it a difficult week environmentally, but in the nation, but in the world, but it was a difficult week in the text because we discovered that here it was, the early church, all fresh and free off of Pentecost, excited, and these guys had already looked the magistrates and they looked the Sadducees and the Pharisees in the face and said, we're going to preach the name of Jesus. They'd seen God come in and set them free and lead and make a difference. We've seen the man that was out there on Solomon's porch that had been lame in his legs and all of a sudden he received strength and all of the multitude saw it and glorified God and yet it brings us to a situation last week where with all that God had done and all that God was doing in the life someone still desired to gain glory that belonged to God. Ananias and Sapphira, we saw that story, it was so difficult. And for years I thought it was about, they, they could have just told the truth about the price of the land. But as I dealt with it and studied it a little bit more and God gave a fresh revelation this cycle through this text, it was more than just the price of the land. It was more than just lying to the prophet. It was more than just dealing with it and holding it back. But the scriptures in the chapter before that, when everybody brought their stuff early with no reputation, with no regard, nobody got to know this. I'm the one, I'm the first on the scene, or I'm the person that dealt with this, or I'm the person that identified this, and I was connected to this family. It was not about that. The concern of the early church was making sure that everybody received what they needed. And so by the fact that they stood back and they waited and they wanted to present it as a singular case, I want to present myself differently. I want to let the church know that I donated this. This didn't come through the regular tithes and offering. This carries my name on it. I want to let the world know that we did this. This was an extension of my household. You know, I like the old song, if I gain any praise. Let it go to Calvary because to God be the glory. And that was the issue. Glory does not belong to man. Glory does not belong to our tabernacles. Glory does not belong to this world or the government. Glory only belongs to God Almighty. 
As we're living in the last days, which you know that I'm very convinced we are, that's what the purpose and the, the backdrop behind our teaching through the book of Revelation just last year and how serious it was in my heart. I am deeply convicted about the fact that we are living in the last days and one conviction that helps me to make sure that I stay on the right side of God is no matter what happens in life, no matter what credit you give, make sure that glory is never misplaced. Glory does not belong to us. Glory is not going to come to us. All the popular song and stuff, it's not coming to us. Glory belongs to the Lord God because he is the only one that's glorious. We are to receive blessings. We are to receive companionship. We are to receive encouragement, but we are not to receive glory. Glory belongs to the Lord. Glory can never come to man. Glory can never come to a race. Glory cannot come to us because we do not own the, the keys and the access to glory. That belongs to Jesus the Christ. So, so when they thought about it, they wanted some good glory that belonged only to God. When everybody brought it together as a church, then God received the glory because everybody's heart was conditioned that we were the real church. We are functioning so that nobody's left behind. We are functioning so that everybody should be healed. We are functioning so everybody is somebody in the body of Christ. We are functioning so that everybody can feel like I've been forgiven. Everybody can feel like that I came in the right way. Everyone can feel that I've been saved set free. Everyone can feel that my labors were not in vain. My standing on the door was much as the soloists in the choir and the soloists in the choir brought nothing more or less than the person that cared for the facility and the one that was the speaker of the hour that day didn't give any more d diligence and there's no special reward that needs to be celebrated that day. We all tried to do what God told us to do in the confines of his scripture and ultimately glory does not belong to us but it belongs to God and so that was the difficulty and because of that God dealt swiftly so that the church could be in the right position somebody asked me one time well, why did they have to die we took I said it was not about the land nor was it about the persons because God has no respect to person. God's word is true for everyone. Everybody need to live holy and trust in the Lord. But the issue was if God would have allowed glory to be misplaced at such an early point in the church, what hope would we have for the truth? The scriptures were being canonized. Paul had not yet given the two-thirds of the New Testament that God used him to author. John had not given his epistles of John and revelations, and Luke had not finished compiling the gospel according to Luke and the book of Acts and all of these things that were so necessary for our strength and our spiritual diet today had not been yet completed. So God had to move to make sure that his glory was placed in the right bracket so that the church would not start off on the wrong foot. When you're growing a plant, if you're a gardener, if you're growing a tree or anything you're growing outside, you, you know that it's necessary to make sure at a young tender age that you prop that tree up and you have to put the things around. That's why tomato plants, you put the circular things around them or the stalks in the ground and you lace them up so that when the tomato plant grows, it doesn't just spread all over the garden, but it grows up straight in a vertical method so that your good fruit would not be hanging down on the ground for the worms and the bugs and all of the rot to get to them. And it's the same way with our spiritual gospel. When people are new in the body of Christ, we have a responsibility to undergird them with love and sincerity and truth and, and to undergird them with the necessary things that can make a difference in their lives so that the rotten things of this world do not decay what God is trying to put together. 
That's why it's so necessary for seasoned Christians to not operate with attitudes. Don't operate trying to build a name for yourself. Don't make everything about money all the time where people cannot see that there is a deeper purpose in the cause of what we're doing. Don't make it about you and your family all the time so that people will not open up and realize that we serve a God that loves all families, but make it about the truth of God and God's love and how it's demonstrated one to another. And then we can build up strong new Christians to know that God is real. We can build up strong families to know that I can make it with the Lord on my side and ultimately we'll build a strong church that can stand against the wiles of the devil and be a safe haven where people can know that there is a fellowship whether in the building or out of the building there is a fellowship of hearts that God is with us every step of the way and so that's why that was necessary. But when we get into the text today in the fifth chapter from the 15th verse, it says that in so much they had began to get power. See, nobody else wanted to go the route of, of, of um, Ananias and Sapphira. Nobody else wanted to go that route. So they had began to get power in the church. And it says they had so much influence now that the believers were added to the church, multitude, both men and women. And in so much as they brought that, that word, in so much means there was an influence. There was something about them that people recognized that they brought forth the sick into the streets and they laid them out on the beds and the couches and that at the least of the shadow of Peter passing by might be overshadowed some of them. So that was, they had so much confidence in the church that they believed, look, I don't need Peter to show up at my house. He don't have to call me every day. I don't need this person to say my name and make my name in life. I just need them to walk by and I can feel the love that's growing inside of the early church. But there was something else brewing on the inside. The, the, the powers that be, the Pharisees, the Sadducees as it says in the text, they were growing up on the inside and they had a problem with these men speaking about this and they want to know how can we make this go away? How can we deal with it and how can we stop this thing from happening? And they were so struck by that influence that they thought that they could put fear into the hearts of the early church when they arrested them. But how many know that when you operate with faith, fear is no match for faith. And so we're going to see the power of what faith can do over fear. And then you're going to be able to link together how the world loves to use fear. The world chase after fear. But it's our duty as Christians to apply a faith walk on every temptation that may come at us to bring fear in our lives. Let's look at how they did. They purpose with fear. They propagated fear when they placed their hands on them. Now see, there's an old rule right there that we know about that, that we don't be violating that rule in the 21st century now because I've been around, I've had people say uh, many things to me. I've heard, had them claim that I was not a real preacher and you're not this and you're not that. And folks have always went on about it, but yet they never, you know, I never paid any attention to that because I know when God called me, I know when God set me apart, I know when God laid his hands on me, I'm clear to know that my scripture and my calling and my lifestyle and what God did for me fits his scriptures of someone that's called to live and to bring glory to his name. So I know all of those things are laid out. So it never bothered me with that. But one thing that never happened in my life, we got an old saying that you don't put your hands on nobody. Folk want to put their hands, people not in the right relationship. We don't even want someone touching us on the shoulder. It's not a big thing and it's not a surprise that if you put your hand on somebody, somebody will say, get your hands off of me. So they had a fear and this goes way back to the early church where they put their hands on the apostles. They said, we're going to shake them up this time. We're going to let them know that we mean business this time and they beat them and they, they locked them up in prison. But don't you know that God got a way of faith prevailing even in the midst of fear when they laid their heavy fear tactics on the apostles of the early church? God sent an angel down to open up the chains and the locks that were on the prison doors and he brought these brothers out of prison while they were preaching there and standing up and when the Pharisees and the Sadducees 
got together, they said, let's give a report on those men that we locked up and we're going to stop this gospel and we're going to put the fear of the government in them. We're going to put the fear of what's in the environment in them. We're going to put the fear of everything on the news inside of them. We're going to put fear that will call man heart to fail. We're going to put fear to make them believe that there is no escape. We're going to put fear that will make them believe that there's just no hope. What are we going to do? Those that are left in Afghanistan, what are we going to do with all of the refugees that are in America? How are we going to make it with that open border? How are we going to deal with all the pressures on this side and that side? There's fear on every side. Can I breathe air without getting some contagion? Can I visit my child without breaking out in something? Fear is just coming from all directions. But when God stepped in the midst, God gave faith that made a difference because when that council got back together to get a recount and to see how much power fear had over top of the early church, they were saddened to their hearts to hear that we beat them, we mocked them, we forbid them to talk in the name of Jesus. We put them in a prison. We put strong men on their gates, but there is something about their power where they're standing out there in the gates talking about this same Jesus that you told them not to talk about. So do you see the power of how faith can move? But we operate some time and we don't give faith the full credit that faith deserves. But when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, only in Jesus Christ always, not only do we have confidence in this world, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, not only do we build a better church, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, not only do we build a better testimony for our families to operate, but when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, it puts us on a solid rock. And I like when the old songwriter said, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground are sinking sand because they had their faith in Jesus Christ. They gave all glory to Jesus Christ. They chose faith over fear. And look at how God, when they needed someone to rescue, he sent an angel down from glory to open up the prison. And he opened it up and sent them right back to the same place that they had preached again. And they were there preaching and teaching and talking about the goodness of the Lord. And don't you know that they brought these men before the council and they brought them without violence this time trying to find out what it is about you that gives you so much strength what it is about you that give you so much authority what is it about you that these that you can just go on and you can deal with it and, and keep on teaching and preaching in the name of the Lord and don't you know that the early apostles said when they asked them did we not command you to not preach in Jesus name and now you plan to bring the doctrine that's going to put Jesus blood on our backs so let's deal with what faith just did right there they were afraid of their reputation they were afraid that goodness and kindness was stealing all of their glory they were afraid that people lives were being changed and they were trusting in the name of Jesus more than they're trusting in medicines more than they're trusting in all the things of this world, more than they're trusting in government. Vaccines are good, but they're not Jesus. There's no healing greater than the name of Jesus. Medicine is awesome. I take some myself every now and then, but it does not replace the power of what God will do when he get inside and get to work it. He works through the doctors. He works through the medicine. He works through the environment. But most of all, he responds to a faith walk and how we access that faith is not having faith in anything. Some 
some folk got faith in the church building. Well, that'll close down on you. Some folks have faith in their parents. Parents eventually have to pass away. Some have faith in their preacher. Preachers are human and they make mistakes like everyone else. But when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, then you send up a connectivity to heaven. And God got in his word that if it's bound on earth, it's bound in heaven. If it's loosed on earth, it's loosed in heaven. And then when that connectivity sends in an instant message to Jesus Christ Almighty, God being Jesus the Son, being Jesus the sacrifice, the great redeemer of the world, he sends down and dispatch whatever we need. Sometimes it's just the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And since Holy Spirit already live in our hearts, he'll give us the right things and the right words and he'll touch the right hearts. Sometimes he'll send down an angel and that angel will open up the door of that prison, will adjust a loan application, will work in the hospital room where you didn't know there was help. Sometimes that angel will move your name up on the transplant list. Sometimes that angel will guide that car back home to safety. Sometimes that angel will help open up the lips of that mute child or that deaf baby. And then sometimes God works through nature where he can have everything around us just operating and cooperating to bless us and be there for us. Why am I going to fear what's in the world when I got faith in the creator almighty? Why am I going to fear something that's temporal when I got faith in the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end? Why would I fear something that can harm only this body when I got faith in the architect of my body, my creator from the dirt, the one that carries the breath I breathe, the light of the world in Jesus the Christ, the true and living Savior. So it's our duty, just like the early church, to remember the things that God has done. Give glory to God Almighty and Him only for the things that have happened in our lives. But most importantly, let your faith in Jesus Christ guide your conversations over any fear that this world may offer. I'm not speaking that the conditions of the world are not real. They are very much real. But what I'm speaking of is that that which is inside of you, the love of Jesus Christ that lives in your heart, is the source and the strength of your faith. And let the love of God guide your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And not only will Jesus make a way and he will give healing over everything that may cause fear. Not only will Jesus make a way and bring this pandemic out of the air, not only will Jesus make a way and protect those that are vulnerable, he promised in his word that he'll always be with you, always, even until the end of this world. Church is our responsibility, just like the early church, to let our faith overrule our fear. Choose faith over fear. And not faith in oneself, not faith in this world, but faith in the power of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've never opened up your heart, maybe things of this world just have caused your heart to just be in a difficult spot. Maybe you're dealing with some hurt right now. We have members that are dealing with COVID-19 diagnosis and we're certainly trusting and praying that God will open up the doors of heaven and bless beyond imagination. People are dealing with situations. Our hospital has a high census in this region. So we're certainly praying that God will bless and minimize some of the impact on our hospitals. We got people that are hurting on every side. We've got situations, our schools are, are open up again, so we're praying for the safety of our children. We're praying that God would move and just bless and protect our teachers, keep our teachers safe, keep our children safe, bless our parents. And not only speaking of from a COVID standpoint, I'm praying for the, the car lines where hundreds and thousands of kids are running back and forth. God will protect our babies. I'm praying for the mental, mental sanctity of the teachers that are dealing with the response responsibility of managing a class of 20 and 30 of God's precious gifts 
that God would bless and strengthen on every side. Praying for the senior citizens that have experienced a magnified degree of loneliness during this period of isolation, that you will always be reminded that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He belongs to you. You belong to him. And we pray that God will let the faith which is given through Jesus Christ guide our hearts and minds. If you've never asked Christ Jesus to be your Savior, today just simply say, God, I ask you to forgive me for everything I've done. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. And God, help me to develop a strong faith where I can trust you instead of the fears of this world. Dear Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we magnify your name. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.